We don't usually do these videos, we do them sometimes, but they feel a bit clickbaity, but in this one, honest to God, there are some things you definitely don't want to miss. What's up guys, it's Smith here from GamersHeroes.com, and today we've got our 10 awesome tips to Dragon's Dogma 2 that you do not want to miss. Starting juicy, you can get a completely free and completely full set of heavy armor right at the start of the game. Within the first 30 to 60 minutes, head to Venworth, which is the capital of this region. Once you're there, you want to head to the gates of the castle, which you can find at this location just here. Once you are in the gates, simply head in towards the jail and you will find a well. Climb to the bottom of the well, head to the end to get a chest. This heavy armor will last you till at least 10, 20 hours in if you upgrade it. It's really good and a fantastic start to the game. Next up, how does immortality sound? Well, unless you dive off a cliff, we can't help you there. However, there is a trick to never dying in combat, whether you're fighting ogres, trolls, chimeras, goblins, whatever you want to call it. When you die and your HP goes down to zero, you will have a very brief second in which you can pause the game and apply some kind of potion or restorative. You can see here my health at the bottom is very, very close to dead. The next time I'm going to get hit by this big fugly troll, he's definitely going to take me down. Quick pause, throw in the potion, you're back on your feet. Awesome tip number eight, get on the housing ladder as quickly as you can. You can get a free house, sort of, which answers a few of the problems this game will give you. Namely, that sleeping is not cheap and you really want to learn how to use the save system effectively. Much like the free armor set from the start of the video, you can actually grab this house very early on. All you have to do is head straight to Vernworth, head to this road here, you'll be approached by a lady that wants you to look after her house. You can then go to her house and for the next seven days, you can use it completely for free. You can use the storage and the bed for a free save point and a free heal. After the seven days, she comes back and it's 20,000, which is not a lot of money. I suggest you prioritize this over everything else in terms of your spending. Awesome tip number seven, understanding the saves and manipulating them to your advantage. There are two main saves in the game, an active save and an in save. The active save is one where you save on the menu using the system option. The in save is whenever you rest in a bed or an inn in your house, you will get an in save. Now it's important to use these two in, in combination with each other because it will help you on some of the quests where there's a difficult decision to make, a choice or a different outcome that you didn't like. Always use your in save. Rest every chance you can at an inn before you're about to do something important then it doesn't matter what happens if the game auto saves after your main save, you've always got an in save. So make sure that you save there as often as you can. Bit of a no brainer this one, but use the environment to your advantage. The smaller enemies like goblins don't drop a lot of great loot. If you've got too many of them, you want to get rid of one, throw off a cliff, throw them into the ocean. The grab function is really useful for interacting with your environment, throwing people against cliffs, revealing new weak spots. When you're out exploring, watch out for the boulders. You can push these as well as them get pushed on you. So do look for those. There's explosive barrels, different things you can use all over the place. So just analyze an area before you get into a fight. Look at what you can use and look at what can be used against you. This is a game where in a heartbeat you can go from winning a fight to dead and vice versa. So just watch out when you're crossing a bridge. There isn't some idiot asshole arisen waiting to sit in there just to destroy the bridge from beneath your feet. The next one may seem painfully obvious, but one of our editors completely missed this crystal and had a real hard time because of it. As soon as you get to Vernworth, head to this location here, the first visit, and you will find the port crystal. These are the devices that you can use the fairy stones to fast travel back to. They are incredibly rare and most towns don't have them. You're gonna spend a lot of time here, so the fast travel option back is vital. Next up, storage. Store, store, store. Whenever you get back to your home base, whenever you get to a tavern or an inn, store all of your perishables, your fruit, your vegetables, your flowers. These are all used to make the curatives in the game and they do rot over time. They will ripen some of them and then rot, but once they are gone, they are gone. They do not rot in your deposit box. Keep all your stuff safe in storage. There are a lot of quests, a lot of side activities to get lost in in Dragon's Dogma 2. It's actually fantastic. And the pawns are really, really vital. Whenever you've got a quest, look for this little pawn icon here. The different colored hand just depicts which pawn you've got. If they have experience in that and the quest helper trait, you can request them to help you. Make it your quest. Use the go command and they will run you to the location. This is really good if you haven't got an objective marker and they know where to go. So make sure you check this out. It should allow you to stay in game a little bit more without having to look up so many guides on YouTube and whatnot. There is a potential for a huge mistake with enhancing. So be very careful here. Early on, you're fine. You're good to go. As you progress through the game, you're going to want to pay a bit more attention to this. So have a look on the screen here. You can see at the top here, Vermundian. That is the style of this particular blacksmith. This particular blacksmith, when enhancing, will treat all stats fairly equally. There are other towns and locations in the game where you might get increased strength and defense, but decreased magic abilities. So if you don't pay attention to those and you put a lot of upgrades, for example, on a wand and not give it any magic on the really expensive and rare items, you're going to make it a lot weaker than it could be. So make sure when you're out and you're enhancing, 
pay attention as i said early doors when you've got the cheap weapons it's not a problem just pay attention when you've got the really cool fire weapons and that kind of stuff and last but not least the courtly attire do not sell any of your courtly attire items unless you've got one set put by there are a number of locations and quests in the game that require you to be dressed appropriately or you can't gain access they are required items so there is a way to buy them back if you've run out but they're 300,000 gold pieces a piece so you want to find two of these the top and the bottoms you can find them in the noble quarter once you've got one set put them away you can sell the rest just make sure you always keep that one set to hand tell you what it has been many years since i feel like we've had a proper rpg not shitting on the recent greats final fantasy yakuza they've all got their own place but just a good old-fashioned rpg doesn't hold your hands just throws you to the wilds and gives you a sword to deal with it all absolutely loving this game i hope you guys are enjoying it if you've got any extra tips and tricks to share with our viewers do post a comment down below and make sure you check the pin comment out for our complete walkthrough guide collection it's got a ton of different guides on a ton of different subjects and i'll see you guys in the next one take care now